Welcome! I'm Yuan Nielsen. And I'm Lincoln Murphy. And this is Impact Weekly. We're here to help you make your customers successful. Each week, we answer your most pressing customer success management questions by relying on our years of experience with companies around the world. Let's get this going. Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Impact Weekly. We're back. Another question to deal with today. And um, this is the question we got. Can you share an example of when you yourself got customer success? And also perhaps the opposite. Funny <laughs> question, right? I love it. Okay. That's, <laughs> this, is, this is interesting. All right. It is. Huh. And I think I, I think it's um, I think it's I mean it's a fun question, uh, but it's also actually really good sometimes to put yourself on the other side, and uh, yeah, reference some of your own experiences being on the customer side and having uh, customer success uh, dealing with you. So uh, I think we can get some good points out of this uh, question for sure. Absolutely, I, I think you know. There's a lot of different ways to to look at this. I think just what's coming into my mind um, are are the times where I wasn't uh, customer success, um, and I think that that right there is is something that we we need to understand. Like I think as you know, human nature is to always remember the the negative experiences, yeah. um, and so it's much yeah. easier to think of examples where it didn't work, and you know, because honestly when, when stuff just goes right, that that's just to be expected, right? That's, you know, customer success yeah. is sort of table, st- exactly. table stakes. So, right. um, I have a lot of thoughts going in, on in my mind right now, but, but most yeah. of them are, are, are not the great experiences. They're, they're the ones where it, it didn't quite work out, but this is, yeah, this is interesting. Okay. Yeah, no, but you're right. And I think we, we need to, especially as a consumer, as a private person, uh, when you, when you consume services of, of all kinds, I, I think a lot of us can relate to having these bad experiences, right? When you haven't received the service or the the, the product that you expected. Uh, but it also goes, of course, for us being in a business to business environment when we're when we're buyers of, of software or other services as well. But I think similarly, as you say, Lincoln, that we we, we tend to remember more the 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 miss miss ups and the the bad experiences rather than uh, the good ones um, but uh, for sure you we have those as well and and we're going to talk about that yeah I'm, I think I think one of the things though from if we're getting kind of you know technical on on customer success as an operating model and customer success management um, or as an operating philosophy and customer success management as an operating model um, you know if we look at appropriate experience. When we, when we teach appropriate experience, which is part of desired Mm -hmm. outcome along with goal, we teach that in impact Academy. One of the things that I say is, um, you know, our customers need to need to have, uh, you know, their, their goal met, but of course they also need to have that done in a way that is, that is appropriate. Like they're, they're getting the experience that is appropriate to them. And appropriate is the word we use because it's, it's well, it's the appropriate word. Um, you know, we're not talking about high touch, tech touch, self-service, whatever. We're talking about whatever the appropriate experience is for the customer. So the, the way we talk about that in our, in our training is um, if the customer does not a, a receive that appropriate experience, even if we helped achieve them achieve their goal, they might go find another vendor that can also help them achieve their goal, but do so in a way that, that makes them feel successful. And then we turn it around and say, have you ever experienced a situation where the product or service you were using helped you achieve your goal? Like you got out of it what you needed to, but something just didn't feel right. Something was off. Yeah. Something, you know, just the experience wasn't what you wanted. So, so you went out and found a, another vendor or another product, another mm-hmm. service that also helped you achieve your goal, but, but gave you all of that in, in a way that made you feel successful. made you, it it felt right. If that's ever been your situation, then you have experienced an inappropriate experience. And so, Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, that's a valuable lesson that we, we, 
we give in Impact Academy a, a round appropriate experience. And I think the same thing, just we might want to take that tact with with just customer success overall. Have you ever had a situation with with a vendor where like just it just didn't work out? Yeah. something wasn't right, right. You didn't achieve your goal. You didn't get that appropriate experience met. And then what went wrong? You know, like, like let's, let's figure out how that could have been better because that's how your customers are looking at their experience with you. You know, and I yeah. think I jokingly say, um, you know, how many of your customers are, are in a situation right now where, yeah, maybe you're helping them achieve their goal, but they're not getting their appropriate experience. You know, like that's, I say that jokingly, but it's, of course, very, very true. Like how many of your customers yeah, right now are yeah. in that situation? So yeah, this is interesting um, because we do talk about that, but we don't really, we don't approach it from this exact uh, scenario. And, and I actually like this, something yeah. we might want to incorporate into the training just as a, as a thought yeah. experiment. And, and yeah, definitely. I think, and, and my first thought when I, when I look back in my ex own experiences, uh, getting customer success, I think most of the positive examples there are situations where I actually we started off in a bad way. We kind of mm -hmm. hit the, yeah, we hit some we hit some uh, uh, roadblocks. Uh, we we actually was in a, in a bad situation, and and they turned it around, and we actually made it work, and we got where we wanted to. And, and so I, I especially remember we we changed our. Uh, ERP or uh, yeah, the financing system uh, just shortly before we had to to close the year and it was quite tight deadlines and we we did not get I I, I don't know the, the, there was a, a lot of problems getting the tool up and running and getting the the the, the data and the um, I mean maybe we were a bit optimistic as well from our side. But we also got the we got not we did not get the good customer success manager from their part, and we actually had to almost cancel with them and, and really pull out. Uh, and then they 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 stepped up and they kind of you know <laughs> they uh, deployed uh, this this new uh, responsible CSM for us that was insanely good at uh, managing the time uh, we had to get this up and running and what we needed to get done and he was like really straight shooter just listed what needed to be, get done and we made it in time to to uh, to close the year and and get the get all all the paperwork done basically and that that made a huge difference and we kept them as we we kept we, we stayed a long very long time with them as customers so the question is do we do we mess up with our customer intentionally so that we can come in as the hero and solve it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. And, and yeah. the answer is no, don't do that. No, um, no, exactly. But, but that's, that's really interesting because um, again, the things that we remember again, it's human nature. And, and I'm, you know, I think there's lots of just evidence that humans will, will tend to remember the bad things because, you know, a long time ago when we were just out in nature um, hmm. we needed to remember what would, what would kill us. <laughs> and so right, we, exactly. we avoid it. Right. So we tend yeah. to focus on the negative things. And, and when it comes to modern experiences, um, again, where, where things just work out well from the very beginning, it's almost like, you know, even though it was well orchestrated, it was, you know, th th there's a great operation behind it. Great people. It's like, that's just table stakes. That's just yeah. the way it should be. And so yeah. we remember bad situations or in your, your experience, you remember a, a bad situation that was turned around. Um, mm. And that is a very powerful thing, but mm. you know, you, you don't want to manufacture um, no. that. And, and there are dark patterns if, of, of like glitches and then, you know, an intervention to, to fix it. That, that isn't, that, that is something that companies have tried before. Um, yeah. But again, you, you, you run the risk of that not working out. And, and if you got caught doing that, oh, yeah. like now, yeah. now this short term thinking that you had has super long term yeah. consequences. So just don't do that. But if you, if you, if your customer is in a situation where they can ask, you know, why did you let me do that? Or how did I get into this situation? Which is something we never want our customer to be able to ask. And mm. you can come in 
and and solve it. Uh, that's great. Yeah. And to to your point, like one of the things we hear from CSMs all the time uh, in impact. Uh, impact academy training but also just you know when we're talking to 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 csms in in our daily work uh you know we hear things like um the you know the customer saying um you know i'm I'm lost i don't know what to do and the csm Mm -hmm. saying well you know i was able to intervene and and solve this and 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 it worked out well um but you know i really wish I really wish they hadn't gotten there in the first place, right? What could mm-hmm. I have done to avoid that? Because even though we were able to turn it around, it's still, it, mm. it's, it's not ideal, right? So um, we really want to make sure that we're not, um, that we're not letting customers get to a point where they're possibly on the verge of failing <laughs> so no. that we can intervene. No, I mean, of course, uh, you don't want that type of stress and you don't want everybody. Yes, but but on the other side, I, I think you can keep in mind that if you end up in a situation where a customer and you, uh, is in a in a bad state and you and the upside to turning them around is that they will mo- more, most likely be even more happy with you or happy or they will be more successful with you. Uh, going out of that if you turn it around so it, i think that could be like a carrot there to to say if we do this they will i, I think we're going to even be stronger going out of it i think that could be a something to 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 think of and keep in mind yeah and you, you said something you just use the you use the h word which is happiness right yeah and and of course we talk about not not trying to solve for happiness but i i it's a valid, and I'm not, I'm not calling you out for, for saying that, uh, a <laughs> little bit. Yeah, no, but, but yeah. I think there are emotions tied to this. And so while we can't solve for a customer's happiness, like that's not what we're setting out to do when, when we are able to turn something around, we do invoke emotional happiness. And, and if we go back to, um, like Dr. Robert Cialdini's work in, in principles yeah. of influence, you know, happiness will equate to liking. And if we can get people to like us, that's great. Now that's not enough, of course, right? Mm. Um, just happy customers that are, that are otherwise failing. Well, mm. that's not, that's not good. That's not good enough. And so no. we're not solving for their happiness. In fact, you know, to your point about the ERP uh, situation that you had, it sounds like, you know, mm. you, you had somebody come in to try to, um, uh, pick up the pieces of, of what was otherwise a failed or failing yes. um, sort of onboarding experience or whatever. And you had somebody come in yeah. and, and take over. And that person yeah. that took over, they might not have in the moment been making you happy. Like, you know, maybe they, they were pushing you a little bit. Maybe they, you know, they came in and said, all right, you know, things are off track. Here's what we need to do. Yeah. They took charge. Um, what, mm. They weren't making you angry. Right, but no. they were probably pushing you a little bit, and and yeah, that's that's what sometimes needs to happen. So, um, yeah. we we're it's not like, here to solve for you know, happiness. It's uh, I think a good reference there is uh, for anyone who's seen Pulp Fiction, um, this Mr. Wolf character. Uh, yeah, that, that was the situation. <laughs> Check that out if you haven't seen it. It's quite it's a good movie in general, but I think uh, yeah, that's a good CSM there in the <laughs> in the cleaning business. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right i mean sometimes like if you if you haven't seen it definitely watch that movie um but it he, he's not there to solve for their happiness he is there to solve their current situation which is uh quite messy and uh yes you know, yeah so you know and at the end at the end of it they are emotionally happy because he did solve the problem and that's the point it's like exactly we're, we're not in the moment i'm I'm not there to make anybody upset or angry. Um, and if my tone um, is, is upsetting to you, I apologize. <laughs> I think is what he says. Um, yeah. But um, uh, something like that, I'm paraphrasing. But basically, um, you know, in the moment, we have to do what we have to do to, to make, to get you back on track. And then generally what happens after that is you feel happy, right? Because, right. because that, that's happened. But I'm not here to just try to make you happy. Um, so that, I think it's really interesting, um, you know, this, this, this whole idea of, of, you know, being customer success and, and how we didn't, we tend to focus on negatives. Mm-hmm. I will tell you, I have when I mean, yeah. we're doing this 
you know, the way that, so you're listening, you're like, what's going on here? Um, this question was, you know, was presented to us like right before we, we started to record this. So I mean, we're kind of just pulling this together uh, in real time, and which I think is interesting. So my yes. brain's going a hundred, hundred different directions. One example that just popped into my mind of, of like a, a positive experience from the beginning yes. is Peloton. Now yeah. people can, can say everything, whatever they want about Peloton. Um, I, I'm a huge fan. Uh, I have a, a Peloton bike. It changed my, basically changed my life. Um, fantastic, uh, device, but I'm not here to promote them, but, um, their customer success is top notch, but here's the thing. Mm. I'm not talking about, uh, customer success from a, you know, or like, you know, they're an e-commerce company. Basically you order the bike and then you have an app, Mm. all that stuff that, you know, that customer service aspect of it was just fine. There wasn't anything necessarily remarkable about it. Uh, it was, it was fine. So this is customer success in a different way. This is customer success at the class level. And what I mean mm. is, um, when, when you join a, a class, either live or a pre-recorded one, and you're doing, you're doing your ride. And this is one of the reasons yeah. why I like it better. I could, I don't think I could do just a stationary bike with no, no interactivity, but the, the teachers, um, are they, they're not just telling you how to ride your, how to ride the bike, um, or just playing music and, and just, you know, being, um, sort of, uh, uh, motivational. They, this whole thing is, is very well orchestrated and very well mapped out and they understand their writers. They understand, you know, mm. the, the majority of their writers, there's, there's always going to be the outliers that are like, you yeah. know, uh, professional cyclists, just, just taking mm. a class to, to keep, you know, keep their fitness up or, or whatever between races or between training. But, you know, the majority of their riders are going to fit into this, this middle, you know, middle of the, the, the curve and, and they're just like regular people. And mm. so they understand that at certain parts of the ride where it gets harder, um, your form might start to suffer. And so I'm riding along, you know, 20 minutes into a ride and, uh, we, we start going up a hill and I start, my posture starts breaking and I start bending over a little bit and, and the teacher will say, uh, sit up straight, look forward. Like they'll, mm. he'll, he or yeah. she will, they'll, they'll give, they'll give cues mm. to that speak directly to me. Yeah. And it really feels like th- even though this isn't a live class and even if it was, they couldn't see me, but it feels like they know what I'm going through. And yeah. so I sit up straight. And of course, yeah. when you do that, your posture is better. The ride is better. So that's just one example. Like that's mm. how we need to think about working with our customers. Mm. We need to understand them, understand mm. what they're going through at the different life cycle stages yeah. and be able to speak directly to what they're probably experiencing. Now, ideally, you know, I suppose we could know exactly what they're experiencing, but as you move away from, you know, really, you know, sync, uh, synchronous engagement and move to more async and you, you're working with a larger um, book of business or you're working with a larger mm. portfolio of customers. You can't have that, you know, one-on-one uh, you know, engagement with all of your customers. So you don't know exactly what they're going through, but we can extrapolate for this cohort that they're all at this yeah. point. This is probably what they're experiencing. So when you intervene, you can say, yes, look forward, sit up straight. Um, and, yeah. and, that will make them more efficient. So that's one one positive yeah. thing that just popped into my mind. Yeah, uh, that isn't isn't a tech. You know, it's not like it's not customer success in the way we think about it, but it's exactly how we need to be thinking about our customers. So it's a, it's a great example yes. when I like to use. Um, yeah. So, and, and and when you're really tired there on the bike, I mean, maybe you're not. I mean, you appreciate the advice, but maybe not in the moment, or it's not what you want oh, to no, hear. Oh no! Right, maybe. right. <laughs> but no, it's what you need well, to hear, right? Absolutely. Because why, why am I, why is my posture bad? My posture starts to suffer because the, the ride is getting harder. Yeah. So when they say sit up straight, look forward, whatever, like that is the harder option, literally Mm. the physically harder option. 
Yes. But that's the right option for me. So you're absolutely right. In the yeah. moment, I might be saying terrible things under my breath or, or just screaming them out loud when no <laughs> one's home, um, you know, at, at the at the teacher. And, and then sometimes they yeah. will encourage that. Right. Get get it out. But yeah, yeah afterwards, you're, you're you're feeling great. And and I think there's a lot of lessons to learn from that type of situation that we can apply, you know, even in B2B software, <laughs> yeah. uh, because ultimately we're working with humans. Yes. And that's the key. This is all about humans. Yeah. No, but I think that's, uh, and I mean, it's the similar, if you go to the doctor and so on, I mean, that's where you get, I mean, you, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, uh, I mean, of course that can be, it's not the most uh, pleasant experience always to go to the doctor, but I mean, you want to know what's best for you, not what you, that you don't want someone just pleasing you or <laughs> trying to make you happy, right? You want someone to tell you, you need to do this to get well in whatever way it is, right? I mean, absolutely. Even, you know, I, I know that, that there are some doctors that, that don't have a lot of empathy. They, they, can, they can seem very cold. Even in those situations, you know, you're certainly feeling much less uh, happy if, if, you know, with whatever they've told you. Um, but even in those situations, what they told you is, is presumably, uh, you know, the, mm. the, the right thing that you need to hear, even if it's certainly not what you want to hear now, even better is if the doctor has empathy and, and oh, yeah. you know, good bed bedside manner, as they say, in, at least in the United States where, um, they can, they can treat you as a human and not just, um, yeah. you know, a, a specimen, <laughs> but, um, exactly. you know, so you can, you can deliver, the the news that somebody needs to hear positive or negative but you know if they need to hear it and we're talking about mm. them not being happy it's probably not going to be something that they want to hear you can still do that in a way that takes into consideration what's going on in their world and deliver it in a way that that will hopefully soften you know the the blow um and and comfort them a little bit in hearing that at least you know that that would be that would be great but again even even if that doesn't happen when a doctor tells you something and they tell you what you need to do to work past this situation it's it's still probably going to work out in in your favor even if it wasn't super uh, fun and, and and happy to hear in the pro in, in in the moment so yeah. you know again we're not i'm not equating cs to to being a doctor but there's lessons we can pull from all these different situations yes. in our lives and so i think the lesson of 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 this question Yes. We're going to give you three very concrete things to take away. But I think the overall lesson here is apply this thought experiment in, in your, in your life. Do this occasionally. Like just think yeah. about, you know, what was a situation where I was, I was customer success. Maybe I didn't even realize it. And I look back and I go, gosh, actually that was so fantastic. It was almost, mm. it was unremarkable and uneventful, which is perfect. <laughs> right? Like it was, it, it, that means it just worked. And then think yes. about times where it didn't work and then look at your current situation with your customers and, and, and think, you know, are my customers feeling that way or are they feeling like, you know, where, where everything is working or are they feeling this other way, which is, yeah, why did, why did they let me do this? How did I get in this situation? Whatever. So, yeah. So what are three practical, concrete things that, that our listeners could take away from this? Yeah. No, but I think you, number one here is, I think this question is, is fun and interesting, but it's also a, a lesson for us here to, yeah, put us, put ourselves in the customer's shoes, uh, re reference our own experiences being customer success. And of course, the opposite, uh, I think it's just a good reminder to do that regularly. Number one. Uh, yeah. And then I think number two is, is I've said it several times, but it's, don't let your customer get to a point where they could ask, why did you let me do that? You know, um, just think about that. Where, where are situations where your customer might end up there and, and how can you keep them from, from getting there? So that's, that's yeah. number two. And number three, I mean, really understand uh, your customers and what they're experiencing across the various life cycle stages that will help you uh, solve for this. Uh, uh, we, sh we shared some ex bad examples and some good. Uh, you want to be on the good side uh, of those uh, with your customers, of course. And that's, that's number three. 
Thanks, everyone, for listening. Uh, keep sending those questions to us. We love these, uh, especially the, the little bit other ones, uh, the, the, the ones we haven't heard before. So keep at it and uh, see you all soon. Hey, thanks for listening. Do you want to bring your customer success to the next level? Check out Impact Academy. We have training programs for customer success managers and for leaders in customer success.